I find it inspirational to talk to people that are creative. And what I found very inspirational about you, and I'm hoping to learn more of, <laughs> is also the creativity that God has. And there has been a picture described in the Bible of a potter and clay. And so I'm, I'm hoping you're going to enlighten me. <laughs> Yeah, I often uh, think about that uh, scripture, but in that scripture it says that uh, the potter makes the pot and it goes wrong and he squashes it down and starts again. And I think talking as, as a potter, it's very difficult to do that because when you squash the clay back into a ball again, you've got a lot of air trap in the clay, so it's likely to go wrong. But I can see uh, in that scripture what God is saying, that he's talking about Israel his people that he was going to restore them but uh, for modern day pottery it's very difficult to do that but I can see what God was saying in that scripture. Yeah it was quite a, a toughie actually when I, <laughs> I read it actually I thought hmm we, we often <laughs> refer to this but actually it's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> but it just goes to show how God restores. He restored Israel, his people and if he can do it for his people he can do it for each and every one of us and that's why I like talking about the pottery process compared with the Christian life because it's a, it's a thing of creation and also for restoration as well. So pottery, the picture, the parallels between right. the pottery process and the process of the yeah, Christian what, life. What I'll do, I'll go through the pottery process uh, step by step as I see it as a studio potter. There's a difference between a studio potter and an industrial potter. An industrial potter has everything done for him, so all he does is to sit on the wheel and make pots. Uh, a studio potter will actually start right from the very beginning. They will think of a shape and then they go right through the whole process themselves. It starts off really by the preparation of the clay. A lot of people think that potters just get a lump of clay and throw it on the wheel and there you have the start of making a pot. Well, the potter has to process that clay. He has to take out all the bits and pieces uh, that are in that clay from the seam of clay that comes out of the ground. The clay then is uh, supple and it's good enough to make a pot. And that's very much like the Christian life. Uh, it's a process that God takes us through. He has to prepare us for the future use that he has for us. And there's lots of things that will get in the way of us being a pure body. Uh, there are things like bitterness that are in our lives. There's things like anger. There's abuse. And we have to go through the process or allow God to go through our lives and raise these things to the surface so that they can be dealt with, so that we can become a pure body to be used of God. So that really is the start of the, the process. So with the piece of clay as the potter, how do you manipulate it right. to get the impurities out? You have to wash it, you let it soak for a while so all the impurities will go down to the bottom or in some cases come up to the top. If it's wood, it will come up to the top. And then it's sieved. You put it through a sieve, so you get all these impurities out. Again, it's just like the Christian life. We allow God to sieve our lives, so these things will come to the surface to be dealt with. Is it a very gentle process to actually purify the clay? Um, no, it can be pretty rough. Really? Um, because after you've processed the clay, you have to get all the air out of it, which means you have to knead it like you would need bread dough. You have to thump it, you have to squeeze it. Um, again, that's just like the Christian life. We have to allow God really to sort our lives out. And sometimes it hurts. Sometimes we don't want these things to come to the surface. Uh, we tend to go into our little corners and say, no, I don't want that to happen. But if we're going to be used of God, then we've got to allow him to go through our lives to be able to deal with these things. Um, in a very gentle way, because God is a very gentle man. He's a very gentle God. He won't do it unless we allow him to do it. I think what you're saying about the kneading and then the different impurities come out in, in different ways. That's right. And are there sort of typical ways that, say, you, you mentioned a piece of wood, a piece of wood would come out, or could it be different for each piece of clay? Oh, yes. Each seam of clay in the ground has got its own impurities in it. Um, sometimes, as I say, it could be wood, it could be flint, it could be stone, which if you tried to make a pot, would then cut your hand to pieces. 
and it's also stopped the potter from being able to make the pot that he wanted to make. So it is a process. And can this take a long time, this process? <laughs> uh, it depends on what the clay is like. I mean, what's in the clay. If the seamer clay or the clay is quite good, then it doesn't take so long. But obviously, the more impurities in that clay, the longer it's going to take. So each seam of clay is different. Is, is that uh, right? Each, each seam of clay is different, where, wherever it might be. Deep in the ground, as it is and with the purbex, or there's surface mines where they're just about three or four foot under the surface, there's clay. And then does the end result... I, I'm, I know I'm jumping the stages. Right. I think we're at stage one at the moment, aren't we, Eddie? Yep. yep. But does the end result then reflect it the, does. the beginning of the It does, because the if there's still impurities in the clay, when it's put into the kiln and taken to high temperature of, say, 1300 centigrade, if that clay's not perfect, the pot will explode. So you can see, again, where the Christian life comes in. If we don't allow God to sieve our impurities out of our lives before we start, then when we come under pressure, when we're put into the fiery furnace, we'll just explode. And there again, we're not as God wants us to be. (laughs) (laughs) It's quite interesting. It's fascinating. (laughs) It, it, It is fascinating. Are there any other things that you can think of in stage one that need to be covered? Not really. Um, the clay has to be dried. Obviously, if, if the clay's put through water, it has to be allowed to stand and dried off a bit. Well, otherwise, the clay would be too soft to, to use. So how do you put clay through water, then? Well, you can um, soak it. If you soak clay, it will eventually get into a very soft, gooey substance, and then you can sieve it. It does not like flour. It, it's a very liquidy sieve. Most potters uh, have a table that's got a top made of plaster of Paris. The, the liquid clay is put on the plaster of Paris, and the plaster of Paris will absorb all the moisture, and you keep turning it until all the moisture is dried out from the clay. But most studio potters now, they buy it in already processed. Well, it, it sounds to be very hard work to take something through this process, and you, you have to have a love for what yep. you're doing and a vision for what the end result is going to be because well, otherwise this, you wouldn't even start. Yep. Th- well, this is the next process, you see, because the potter has to have some idea of the sort of pot that he wants to make, the shape and the usage of, of the pot. I mean, if, if he wants to make a teapot, then he has to think of the size of it, how much tea it's going to, to hold. If he's going to make a vase, he's got to think of the, the shape of the vase, how big it's going to be, and then he proceeds to make that particular shape on the pot as well and uh, again it's very similar to um, to the Christian life uh, there's quite a few scriptures uh, that mention creation Genesis 1 verse 27 it says that we're made in God's image and that makes us think of you know, why did God make us and I believe that God made us to come into a relationship with him and he also made us to be a worshipping people And one of the ways we can worship God is to to serve him and be the vessels that he wants us to be. And the other scripture, of course, one of my favourites and my wife's favourites is Jeremiah 29 verse 11, where it says God has plans and purposes for our lives. God just didn't think, oh, we're just going to make man. God made us for a purpose. Exactly the same when a potter makes a pot, he makes it for a purpose. And also Jeremiah 1 verse 5, God formed us and knew us even before we were born which is to me is a staggering verse in the bible because god knew what he wanted eddie goodall to do even before i was born but he knew what he wanted me to do and i pray that i'm doing what god's got for my life but you see potters just don't jump on the wheel and make any old shape it's for purpose and god's purpose for our lives is to serve him and be a vessel for God. So that's where the similarity is between the actual making process or the... We haven't got as far as the making process yet, which is quite interesting, but that's the start of it, that's the design of it. We're still in the planning phases. Yeah, yeah, still in the planning stage. But what you've just said in that scripture is that, you know, the Lord knows the beginning from the end, really, and knows for us. Absolutely. He knows exactly what he has for our our lives. It's just that we've got to tune into God to try and find out what that purpose is. And that sometimes takes a while. Uh, It's taken me a good part of 40 years to realise exactly what God's got for my life. 
um, because I had other things in, in my life that were standing in the way. And there are still, still are things in, in my life that has to be sorted out. But it's taken me 40-odd years to realise realize exactly what God's got for my life. <laughs> well, I don't think you're alone at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> at all. I don't think I'm uh, at all there. alone. It is a process. And I think the modern society that we, we live in, everything is put in little pigeon holes and you're, right. you're either this or you're that. That's and, right. But yeah. is it what God wants for your life? I, I have a favourite saying, um, is it a good idea or is it a God's idea? And so often uh, people think and tell us that they believe that God's got a calling on our life, but is that really what God has for us? And I think that's where you have to come into a very close relationship with God because, again, that's one of the reasons he created us, to have a close relationship with him. And it, sometimes it would come very quickly and sometimes it would take a few years which it has with me. You're saying that God has a purpose for us. If, mm. In the Old Testament, mm. when humanity was starting to spread over mm. the earth, it mm. said that the Lord appointed these people to do this and this to That's do right. that. Those were the yep. carpenters. Those yep. were the, the people who knew how to do bronze. Yeah, the potters. And so you're, you're from the tribe of potters. I'm from the tribe of potters, going back many hundreds, thousands of years, yeah. And I'm proud of it. <laughs> we're still at stage one, aren't we? Uh... Well, we've processed the clay. The potter now has decided what shape he's going to make. And now we go on to a very interesting stage of when he actually throws the clay onto the wheel. Although he's made that clay himself, he's processed that clay himself, people think I'm, I'm funny when I say this, but no two pieces of clay are the same. To the undiscerning eye, like mine, I'd just say, well, that's a lump of clay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't quite go like that. Sometimes, if you leave a piece of clay standing, even for, say, half an hour, which you shouldn't do, you should keep it covered up, but sometimes that happens, you get, like, a, a, a skin form, so you've got a skin on it. Or the clay might be a bit hard. So when you start making the pot, it's a process we call centering. OK, you have to get the piece of clay exactly in the middle of the wheel. Otherwise, you're going to have a wobbly pot. And to do that, you have to use a large amount of strength to actually squeeze that clay as the wheel's going round to actually get it into the, into the middle of the wheel. And if you have a hard piece of clay, it's very hard work to eventually get that piece of clay into the middle of the wheel. Or you can have the opposite. You can have some soft clay, and if you squeeze it too hard, it just flies off. So the potter has to be able to manage both pieces of clay, hard and soft, to make the shape. Now again, that's very much like the Christian life. Some people, if they've got pride in their lives, they tend to be very rigid. You know, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to let God do that in my life. Or, I'm OK, I'm fine. And God finds it very difficult to be able to mould us into the shape that he wants us to be. And there again, if you have a soft piece of clay, it can go everywhere. Again, it's just like Christian life. I mean, there are Christians, bless them, and God loves them, and we love them, but they tend to be very soft, and they don't really know... They've got no foundation in their Christian life. Although they're Christian, but they haven't got a grounding in God's love um, to be able to let God shape their lives. Although God will shape their lives, but it just makes it a little bit more difficult. But sometimes you get a piece of clay is absolutely spot on and it's a joy to work with and you can make the shape within a few minutes. But again, that's just like the Christian life. God loves us what, whatever piece of clay we are, whether we're hard, soft or just right. So I think God is a very loving father and he must be very patient uh, with some of us Christians because he knows, again, he knows the purpose for our lives, but sometimes we, we like to be... Um, rather hard or rather soft. <laughs> yes, yeah, throw ourselves on the wheel. <laughs> yeah, that's do, right. do it ourselves. <laughs> what I found interesting there, Eddie, you said that it, if the clay isn't le has to be left covered before you use it, otherwise it can get a skin. Yeah, that's right. The ideal thing is really to process the clay and use it straight away. All these different things that can be added into the, the process that's right. that yep. you've got to overcome as the potter. Some people may think that once they're Christians it's a super life you know n nothing's going to go wrong they have this this lovely 
picture of a Christian life being absolutely perfect. But Jesus said we won't have uh, a perfect Christian life. There will be trials and tribulations, but the beauty of it is that he's always with us. Just as the, the potter's with the clay, whatever happens to us, wherever we are in our Christian life, he can still make us into the, the vessels that he wants us to be. From what you're saying, I know we're at process two now, aren't we? Have process we three. To, we're at number three. It's, <laughs> it's hands-on all the way. That's right. Whatever point we are in our Christian life, he's always with us. But it's us that tend to go away from, from Jesus. But he's always there for us. Whatever happens to us, if we do fall back, then he's always there to forgive us and we can start our relationship again with him. Stage one was refining of the clay, if That's I've right. got that yep. correct. Refine the clay, get all the bits and pieces out from the clay Stage so we don't explode. <laughs> Stage two, that's your design. That's right. Refined design, that rhymes, I'll get that. Number (laughs) number three was to actually be thrown and centred. That's right, the hard clay and the soft clay. So are we up to number four now? We're up to number four now. This is a very interesting one because after the, the potter's made the shape, you just can't put that pot straight into the kiln, straight into the fiery furnace because it's too wet. And it's also, you've got to have glaze applied to it before you put it in the kiln. So what happens, the potter puts it on the shelf to let it dry off. All the moisture has to be dried out of that clay before the potter can then apply the glaze. Now, doesn't that sound like the Christian life sometimes? Being on a shelf (laughs) and being dried out (laughs) and not wanting to be there, probably. Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Everything seems very, very nice, and everything's going along very nice. Thank you very much. And suddenly, you go through a dry period in your in your Christian life, and we think, "What am I doing?" Well, I've been forgotten. I've been forgotten. But you see, I get back to that scripture. Jesus said, "I will never leave you, nor forsake you." But when we all go through this dry period, let's remember that Jesus went through exactly the same thing himself because most of the occasions when Jesus preached to a multitude, he would take himself off away from people to do what? To be with the Father. And it's very difficult in times like this, but when we go through that dry period in our Christian life, then's the time to get close to God. Very difficult. It's very easy for me to say that, and it's very easy for any pastor or, or minister of the church to say that, because you could be going through that experience yourself right now. And if there's anybody who's listening to this who's going through that, I would say to him that get into the Scriptures, get into God's Word, spend some quiet time. Some people may think that when they go through these dry periods, they, they should make themselves busy. Yes, they, they, they can do that. But I find that the best thing to do is to get into God's Word and then turn to people, Christian people within your church or fellowship that you can trust. I have got three or four people that I know that if I'm going through a dry patch in my life or any trouble that I know that I can turn to them. So if you're going through that, that period of your life, turn to God. Come into that relationship with God. I know it's a strange thing to say, but don't worry because God has got a plan and purpose for your life. Even though it might seem that God's forgotten you because you're on the shelf, God hasn't forgotten you because he has a plan and purpose for your life. Actually, what, what I was thinking is you were saying that although you're on this shelf, actually something is happening, although it's yeah. something very, very subtle, yep. and you're yep. not noticing it. And probably, I don't know, is, is there a visual change to the potter? Can the potter tell by sight or by touch that this uh, thing is it As it dry? dries, it will shrink. <laughs> no, no pot while it's drying will actually stay the same height or width it will actually shrink for instance the clay that I use it shrinks a tenth from start to finish I'm not saying that Christians will shrink no I, th- I think it's probably where the similarity changes there in fact hopefully uh, uh, the Christian perspective would be that As you go through that drying period or that dry patch in your life, the wilderness experience, you actually grow um, because you get closer to God and your Christian life is enhanced and you should be able to grow. So there may be that point, it's not exactly the same as the pottery process. Well, I'm just thinking if it's it's water that's evaporating, actually the pot is becoming stronger. Um, Perhaps. I don't know. No, it's become more fragile. It's become more fragile. Yeah. 
Oh, poor pot. Because, well, th through the whole making process until you get to the, the actual firing of the kiln, um, it is a very fragile process. But again, I suppose, as, as a Christian life, I mean, we are all fragile, aren't we? <laughs> yes, at, at the different stages. Yeah, at the different split stages. I mean, when the pot has just been made and it's wet and soft, if you don't hand, if you handle it roughly, it will go completely out of shape. And then the potter has to put it back into shape. And I suppose, again, that's, that's very much like the Christian life. And we, we take knocks and we can be knocked out of shape. But then God comes along and gently gets us back into the shape that he wants us to be. But, yeah, it's a very uh, fragile process. You have to handle it very carefully. So that's stage four. <laughs> Refined design. Yeah. Centre. Yeah. Dry. Yes, right. OK. Oh, there. I'm getting there. <laughs> You're getting there. Right, Through the well, process. Now. Right, now, when the, the potter, he's, he's made the shape that he's, he's wanted. Now he's got to put the design. So every pot has its own different design that's painted on it. He has to choose the glazes to actually decorate the pot with. You might have, say, ten pots looking exactly the same shape, but then the potter puts different designs on, different glazes on. That's before it's put into the kiln. That's very much like the Christian life. A God does cover us with his glory. So we've got this outer, shiny skin. But to get that lovely, shiny skin or surface, we have to build into the kiln, which is the next process, which, as I said earlier on, can be very hot. I mean, most kilns, the temperature are 1300 centigrade. And the idea is that the glaze melts into the, the, the clay, so you get a nice, shiny surface, whatever design it is. And that's very much like the Christian life again, like Daniel, when he was placed into the fiery furnace. God often does that. He places us in, into situations where the temperature gets pretty hot, but he has every confidence in himself and in us, if we've gone through that process with him, that we can stand the heat of that kiln. I, I know from my personal experience, um, it gets pretty hot sometimes where we live. But then we know that God has called us to live where we're living, and we've been through that process, or we're still going through that process. The process never stops. We have to go through that fiery furnace. We have to go through that. Some Christians would probably like it that they didn't have to go through the kiln. But I think we all go through that process in our, in our Christian life. But again, you see, it says in the Scripture, God will never leave us nor forsake us. Just as when they opened up the furnace to see if Daniel was a pile of ashes, they saw an extra person inside that fiery furnace. Again, when we go through those uh, hot times in our Christian life, God is always there with us. We've got one more process to do. Well, I've got a question still, right. Eddie, about the glazes, because right. you said a glaze. So what format does a, a glaze take? Do you have a pot of colours? I, d I don't know. What, yeah, how you, does it you've work? You've got, um, basically, glaze are different coloured oxides, iron, lead, lead for instance, produces red, which is an easy one to remember. You, you have a, a, what we call a base glaze. So if you want a background of red, you would then spray red on first. And then you would have small pots, as you say, of different coloured glazes that would fire to a different colour than the, the red background. So it's more prominent. And do these glazes represent clearly the colours that they're going to come out That's once right. they're fired? Yep. Yeah. So would you put the entire design on there then? Yes, you, you would put the complete design. You, you would spray the background colour first and perhaps leave it for half an hour or so so it dries. And then you apply the other glazes on top of that one. You, you do that in one process. So at that stage, you're really getting a picture of what this pot or That's this right. vessel is going That's to right. look like. That's right. Before the firing. Yeah, m m sometimes industrial pottery, they would fire pots twice but I'm really thinking about the pottery process from a studio point of view again it depends a lot on the actual clay there are different types of clay uh, which only need one firing process there are other types of clay that need two firing processes but generally speaking uh, a studio pottery or studio potter because of expense and time would only use one type of clay that you could use, just use one firing on. So 
refined design. Yep, refined design making. Yes, with the centre when it goes on the, the hard on, and on soft the, clay. Hard and yep. soft clay. Then drying. Drying and then. F- then decorating. Decorating. And then the firing. Is that still number five or number six? The firing. Uh, number six is a very interesting one because they're all interesting. <laughs> The final one is when, again, the pot's put on the shelf until such times as, I mean, if you're talking about the studio pottery, um, it's put on the shelf until it's sold, until somebody comes along and says, oh, that's very nice, I'll buy that. But the pots can be stood on that shelf for ages. And again, this is where frustration can come in. Just as with the drying process, the pots are left there. It could be for weeks, it could be months. Uh, I think you might have problems if it's about a year. What's significant about a year? Is it very dusty at that stage? Yeah, you get very dusty and you're likely not to be sold. And, and that's when, the, if you're a businessman, that's when you drop the price so you can sell it. But I'm, <laughs> uh, I can't see any uh, significance with the Christian life in that one at the moment. But the point I, I like to make about this is that in the Christian life, we can, we can find out exactly what God has for our lives and we go through all the process and then we're left on the shelf again. And I like it like this. If you're a teapot, uh, you're a teapot. If you're a vase, you're a vase. OK, you can use a teapot to put flowers in, but it looks pretty stupid. But you can still use it to put flowers in, but that's not what the pot are designed it to be. And in my experience, there are Christians who know what, God's got for their lives, but they want to get on with it. They're eager, perhaps too eager sometimes. Sometimes we have to wait upon the Lord until he says, right, go, I want you in that situation, I want you in that situation. And sometimes it can be very frustrating, very frustrating. You know what the calling of of God is on your life, you've been through the process or you're going through the process, but nothing's happening. It's like the pot saying, "Yoo-hoo, I'm over here. Um, I'm here. You know, I, I'm a teapot. You can use me as a teapot, but you're still there. And sometimes we can step out a bit too quick. And this is where we, we need to come into a real relationship with God. Because then God says, I want you there. I want you doing that. I want you to speak to that person. I mean, even just say, going up to a person and saying, God loves you, or I love you, that is being used of God. But we have to go through that process to be able to do that. God uses me to empathise with people rather than sympathise with people. It's okay to say, oh, oh, poor, oh yes, yes, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But unless you've been through that yourself, that same experience, you can't really show God's love. God knows how that person is feeling. And if we can empathise, then it's like kind of saying... Yeah, I know how God feels because I've been through it myself and God's been through it. I mean, there have been many cases, not only in my life, but also in my wife's life, where God's used the past because we've allowed God to process our lives, to, to get rid of these things in our lives. And he's used those things to be able to help other people who are going through the same experience. A few years ago, I was an alcoholic. So God puts across my path people who are alcoholics. Um, I try to commit suicide. So what does God do? He puts people across my path who are wanting to kill themselves or contemplating killing themselves. And my wife could probably tell you a few things herself, how God's dealt with her and dealing with her, using her to help other women. Because even going back before that scripture, that God knew me before I was formed. And God knew what was going to happen in my life. God knew that other people were going to get hurt. And he says, "Um, Eddie, um, I designed you to do that. Do it. So that's really the end of the process. But there's one big difference, and I want to emphasise this, between a Christian life and a pottery process. In the pottery industry, we have first, second and thirds. First are the perfect ones. The seconds are slightly bad. The third ones are terrible. That is the pot industry. There will always be rejects. But with God, there is no rejects. You are perfect in his sight. Even if you feel broken, even if you feel cracked, 
even if you feel you're not who you should be, you're feeling insignificant, just remember God knew you before you were born. And in God's sight, you are absolutely grade one perfect.